It's just a few questions. The first one is for you, Sapphire. It says, your characters have such authentic vernacular. How can I, as a teacher, help my students retain their home language while still helping them succeed in the system? Um, I, I think that's uh, really, uh, you know, one of the tasks of, of, of being a teacher is to acknowledge that our students often speak an, another language and that to survive, they need to learn standard English, which doesn't mean that they have to erase Chinese. It doesn't mean they have to erase Spanish. It doesn't mean they have to erase black English. It doesn't mean they have to erase patois. But it does mean that the necessity of, of, of making it means that they learn a second language. And if you teach it like that, that standard English is going to be a second language, not a superior language, not the best language, not the only language, but a second language, now you have an additional tool in addition to your, your mother language. Sherman, this one's for you, but if you had anything to add to that one, feel free as well. This feels like a beauty pageant. <laughs> uh -huh. And I'm going to lose. So, uh, uh, my initial response to that was uh, you know, in my writing, my fiction especially, I use a res term in it which is like aloha, it has all sorts of meanings. Uh, some I've invented, and it made it into Esquire in 1992. So, you know, at the end of my life, on the resume, I'll get to say, I put in it in Esquire. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I've always used it in some form or another, the rhythm, the language, and people don't notice. Uh, I think one of the reasons why I have this career is because I write like I talk. And, uh, and a lot of other writers don't write like they talk. <laughs> and they read each other's books. <laughs> <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I flashed into my head one particular poet who in this review was hammering on, on uh, uh, a, a, a black poet who who used uh, 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 slang and you know particular v vernacular and and I kept thinking you, you put Latin in your fucking poems everywhere. <laughs> Hell of a lot more people you know know hip hop than rap, you asshole. So th that's my response. The the question I was going to ask was about tone, but I'm going to skip that one. And... Okay. <laughs> I think you answered it. But this one is, this one's also for you. It's about um, um, your book, uh, Absolutely True Story. It, it says there were so many deaths in it, were you concerned that some might find the novel too bleak? We talked about this a little bit in our, with the high school students. You know, Sapphire ran into the same ideas with Push, the novel and the book, the idea that we were airing dirty laundry or, and, uh, you know, my books in no way can get even close to how terrible it is, because uh, I'm writing fiction, and people's real lives are, you know, much more terrible. Uh, I actually pulled back on the death, though. My, that year, the book is based on my real experience of leaving the reservation school for the white school on the border, and nine people died that year. I, I put three in the book, so I actually made it 67%. Better, uh, so <laughs> I, I think my math there was really messed up. But uh, uh, as I was saying it, I thought I don't think that's how that math works. But uh, uh, <laughs> the pain and agony, I don't even get close to actually. So uh, it's it's a pale imitation of what people actually feel like. Uh, so no, but although True Diary was the second most banned book of last year in the United States. Which is like, yeah. Uh, but the only one that was banned more was that picture book about the gay penguins in the Bronx Zoo. So, I mean, so what kind of country do we live in where gay penguins are more dangerous than Indians? 
Well, there's actually somebody asked about it because I think your book is still still banned. Recently, there was something in, in Georgia. The, yeah, in, in, in South Florida too, wasn't it? In um, Dade, no, it's it's Dade County, Georgia, not oh. Dade County, Florida. Which I thought it was Florida at first, and I thought Dade County, Florida. I thought I, th I had this image of all these elderly Jewish people, <laughs> you know, marching against me. You know, <laughs> I thought. I thought, that's the liberal county, isn't it? Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that hanging Chad category? Are they, are they still pissed off about that? You know, I thought, did they get the wrong vote? You know, they're trying to, they're trying to ban Mein Kampf and they hit the wrong thing. Uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> that's the first Mein Kampf joke I've ever told. So, but uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Dade County, Georgia. And the big thing, they, I love the quotes the head of the banning committee said, this book is perverse and this writer is perverse. So I want that on the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> I want above the sequel to True Dyer, above my name, above the title, this book is perverse. <laughs> It'll sell 19 million copies. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I enjoy it because as soon as they ban it, the book becomes sacred. And, and uh, I always, whenever it happens, I send uh, 50 books to the nearest public library. And uh, uh, Chris Crutcher, a young adult writer, does that. He taught me that. And uh, so their books are on their way. So uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, I mean, people get a little worked up about it. It's not exactly Fahrenheit 451, you know, but, but it's more like four, Fahrenheit 4.51. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, all it does is help us. And, and uh, it gives the kids who know they want to leave even more reasons. Uh, a friend of mine, Dan Savage, uses the phrase about being ostracized for being gay, but I use it for other things. You can use it for any way of feeling ostracized is, you know, they're not exiling you, they're setting you free. Yeah, so. Um, Sapphire, you, you faced a similar issue with your book. Um, how, how do you respond to uh, when these communities choose to ban your work? Um, it's, uh, for me, it's, uh, um, it's a, a painful and problematic situation sometimes. What happens in, in New York City, at least, is the young adult librarians have a, they have a list, and if your book is on that list, uh, the young adult, uh, recommended by the young adult librarians, that means that the teachers can take your book, can get, take your book, uh, can, you know, get free copies of your book and take them into the classroom. So when my, when my um, book got taken off the young adult librarian list and they could no longer get those free books, and of course my, my readers had to go steal the books, you know, which, 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 which they did. I was in Barnes & Noble and the security guard said, the kids are in here stealing your book. I said, well, they're, well, they're supposed to get it for free <laughs> from the young adult librarians. But um, I think that that whole labeling of um, books as... Um, you know, as a recent review referred to the kid as pornographic or something like that is mis misguided. And it is also an attempt to, to blind the public. And when you start putting certain words on text like perverse or pornographic, you know, it, it can blow them up and make them sensational, but sometimes the, the hands that those books need to fall into uh, it, it never happens, and that information is withheld from people, and I find that I find that very disturbing. Uh, There's just a last question, Sapphire, and we'll start with you. It's related. It says, if you got to design a high school uh, literature class, what would your students read? Oh God, they would read. They would read everything. They would. Um, I think reading. I think reading is really the most important skill because if you can read, then you can teach yourself math. If you you can teach yourself uh, social studies, you know. Uh, so I would have them. I would have them read everything. I would have them, you know, from Shakespeare to Toni Morrison, from the slave narratives to Sherman Alexie, from the Brontes uh, to you know. Uh, you know, to Faulkner, you know, from from Ice T to the the Motown lyrics. You know, I, I would I would I think everything is is literature, and part of this whole idea of the canon has just been to exclude and to to denigrate certain cultures. So I would the the big word would be everything. 
Chairman. I've never been asked that question ever, so I guess people don't see me as teaching their kids. But, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, when I heard the question, my first thought was, I have a friend, a musician, who in his concerts, if things aren't going well, he'll lead the audience out into the street. He once in Ballard, Washington, led the audience, about 100 people from the club down along the water, I mean, down along the street, down to the water on Lake Union, and he played on the beach at Lake Union uh, when he was supposed to be playing in the club. So my thought there was to think, I mean, in a classroom, books can die. I mean, they can be, it's like reading a tombstone or something. So I thought, you know, whatever books I choose, I thought, I'd take the students out into the world with them. I thought, you know, I'd like to start with funny poems, pick like 10 funny poems, and then have the students read them in shopping malls aloud and make the literature come alive for them that way, uh, and, and with, with humor. So, uh, yeah, so that was my first instinct, is to take the books and the kids together out into the world. It's so. a good answer. Thank you both, and uh, thank you all for coming. <laughs>